Welcome to Deep Learning. Today we're going to talk about the properties of images in the context of neural network and how deep neural network came about. Remember the task that we want to solve in this class is image categorization. So we're going to input an image of a certain size to a function and this function is going to be a neural network and at the output we want to have a probability of the object contained in that image. But let's think for a bit about images. Images have a huge variance as you can see in this slide courtesy of Thomas Serre. The giraffe represented in this image clearly has an enormous number of position and also distortions. Yet we all recognize that it's the same kind of animals, it's the same category. So images have a very large variance in terms of where the pixels and the features are. For example, the head of this giraffe in one of these images on top occupies the whole image. In other images instead, the head is only occupying a small portion of it. We might recognize this animal because of his head, because of his long neck, and because of the pattern on his skin. You should re always remember that images have a very high local correlation. You might have heard this before, and I, we want to really bring it up here in this course. Uh, because we need to explain what kind of neural networks we're going to use for recognizing images. And in order to, to do a good job with the data of our neural networks, we need to really have some understanding of, of the data so that we can create a neural network model that is more effective. Ideally, we would like this neural network model to be derived from the data. In this case, we're going to do partly, um, we're going to create this model by doing observation on what is in the image. So first of all, remember the pixel in an image are always highly correlated. What does this mean? It means that if you pick any random pixel in one of these images here, it's very likely that the pixel around it will have a very similar value. So it, it's very highly correlated. What this means, and if we want to distinguish um, local group of pixels, you know, what, that there is an edge or something, we're going to have to collect multiple pixels around it. Also remember that objects are usually made of body parts. Images are made of multiple parts in each, and each part is composed to another hierarchy of parts. So there's really a hierarchy. There's a smaller components like a wheel in this case. The wheel is um, a collection of lines and a collection of circles put in a certain order, in a certain shape. So we can start from a small collection of lines to understanding a radial assembly um, and then we can see that there's a curved a round shape and combining these features we can understand the concept of wheel and then from the concept of wheel multiple wheel make a bicycle more wheels of a specific kind make a car or a truck and so forth so let's go back to our problem of image categorization. What we want to do is, and we should do, is really we need to break down the problem of understanding an image into a set of hierarchical functions, where each one of these is a neural network. If you really want to understand what kind of neural network and image categorization, I would highly recommend to read this seminal paper, which is basically one of the major paper and with a, an application of convolutional neural network, a special kind of neural network for images and was basically one of the first. I highly recommend you reading the first the two or three sections because it really explains how a neural network can be applied to images in, in, in fairly simple terms. The other issue is that we, we, we saw is that images are composed of, of multiple object parts. 
So as you can see from, from the right side, uh, an image is composed of elements like small lines, oriented, oriented lines, that can, then can be uh, assembled together to make a more sophisticated shape. So for example, a square is four, composed of four lines, a circle might be composed of multiple parts of a circle, and so forth. These are parts of an object, from the little lines that you see in a small patch of an image. If you take a bigger patch of the image, you'll see more complex shapes or features. And if you take a bigger part of the image, you'll see object parts. And if you take a bigger part of the image, you'll see individual object in the image. And as you go to the whole image, then you can have an understanding of the entire environment. So there's a hierarchy here. As you can see from um, the figure on the right, starting from the bottom to the top, there's a hierarchy that is able to uh, replicate the visual capabilities of, uh, of um, humans. On the left, instead, you start from the top, but it's the same. We start from an image and we have a hierarchy of function, this neural network. And each one of them is going to understand um, the pro local properties. In order to understand local properties, a lot of this neural network will have to be modified to use what is called as convolution. And you might have heard this before. And I would highly recommend you to um, review the concept of convolution. Convolution comes a bit from the area of receptive fields in the brain, where in individual neurons now, because of the local property of the image, should not be focused just on one pixel. So this, um, in, in the neural network in the middle, one of these units should not take just one pixel as an input. Because one pixel is not going to give you an idea of what the local neighborhood of pixel is what is the features, local features and multiple scale. Instead we use a convolution. A convolution is um, the ability of one neuron to take input from many neurons that are locally locally uh, close. So for example in on the picture of the right uh, the output map all the way on the right is calculated from the input map on the left by a convolutional kernel. And this convolutional kernel is similar to what a real neuron does. It takes input from all local pixels, all local neurons, and combines uh, uh, its output into some kind of a feature. From the seminal paper that I showed you before, it comes out the Lenet of one of the initial convolutional neural network. And this convolutional neural network uh, have a series of steps like the one that we see here. We have an input image that then it has, is convolved as convolution uh, to love to find uh, a small small features in the image like uh, local, local uh, edges. And then we want to we downsample the image because now we want to have a larger receptive field in the next in the next layer because we're not looking for small portion of the image we're looking for a larger portion of the image like our image part we want to figure out from a local collection of image what happens so there is a subsampling operation that is after the first convolution operation then you have another convolution and another subsampling and so forth and this can be repeated multiple times. And the idea again is that we want to find parts, hierarchy of objects. So why this hierarchy in the CNN? Why these multiple layers? For the circuit people amongst you or the more mathematical people amongst you, we can see that uh, a function of function of function, which is what the hierarchy gives us. So, you know, stacking multiple layers of neural networks on top provides a more compact representation, more efficient. In the same way that uh, in circuits, we always create the blocks and we compose larger circuit by replicating the small blocks in a hierarchy. This simplifies the analysis also makes it more efficient.